if you own one of these, you're considered a whale. You're considered a gigachad, right? Because they're tens of thousands of dollars. When I was 16 years old, on November 24th of 2019, I purchased a digital asset. Before you even knew what digital assets were, or before you even realized that they existed. August 4th of 2021, approximately 619 days later, I sold that same digital asset for a 7x return. I purchased each one at 23 cents a piece and sold them for $1.70. Video game economies and digital economies have existed for a very long time, but making money through video games that claim to be play to earn is literally impossible. Today, I'm gonna to show you three digital economies that you can actually make money from today. But before we get into that, I gotta tell you a word from our sponsor, the like button. Just one like will show this to one more person on the YouTube algorithm. It'll make me happy. Thank you. <laughs> before I can show you what about the, before I can tell you about these three digital economies, it's very important that you understand why play to earn is a failure and why the three digital economies that I'm gonna show you have an actual advantage, okay? Because there's something totally inherently different about them, the entire foundation of which they're built on that stops them from making you actual money, that stops them from being worthwhile. So let's hop into MS Paint. People who don't know what pyramid schemes are always generally have the same, uh, the same saying, isn't everything a pyramid scheme? And the reality of that is, yeah, actually it is. And, and we don't have to look much farther through biology and human and literal nature to see that everything is a pyramid scheme. If you've ever taken a biology class in your entire life, you are familiar with, with this. You have your vegetables, you have your grass, you have the, the essence of life. You have plants, right? Plants, you know, you got insects, okay? Insects live off the plants. And then from there, you, we live off the insects, okay? We don't really live off the insects. Obviously, there's a hundred different layers that I'm missing, but <laughs> it's it's clear to see it's kind of a pyramid scheme, right? You have, you have a lot of people down here missing out and losing stuff. You can even see this in society. You have your workers, your middle class, and your, your higher ups. This has always been true. It's always been down to the bottom level to actually keep the numbers up here working properly. This is what an actual economy looks like. So what makes this different from a pyramid scheme? Well, the foundation. Our entire society and our entire well-being kind of lives like this, okay? We cannot have the above items without the thing below, okay? And I mean, it doesn't mean we can't have it, but we're much more likely to go for the bottom before we get to the top because it just doesn't make sense the other way around. We need food, water, shelter, and essentials before we can even consider love, care, and compassion, right? And look no further than Maslow's hierarchy of needs to really understand this concept. You need the base before you can have the rest. Right now, we have people in the Philippines that are making $300 a month off of Axie Infinity. This is what an actual pyramid scheme looks like, okay? Or sorry, but this is what Axie Infinity looks like. You know, like these new investors came in, they just bought these things because they thought they, they thought they could make lots of money. Thus, funding the people above them, the guys in the Philippines that are making $300 a month, isn't because the money is coming from the freaking magical Axie Infinity world. No, it's not coming from a freaking computer screen. The money is coming from other people, new investors. And this is just what a traditional pyramid scheme looks like. If you don't know what this is, then um, then I, I guess I'm happy for you. So why doesn't Axie Infinity work? To put it simply, this entire foundation isn't fun. Okay, there's not, it's something that isn't, it's something that has no value. It brings no real entertainment. It doesn't bring love, care, compassion, it doesn't bring food, shelter, water, essentials. It doesn't provide anything. People that play the game are playing it for one reason and one reason only. And I'll tell you why they're playing it for one reason and one reason only. It's advertised as a play to earn game. Just by advertising as play to earn, new investors are simply going to be play to earn people. They're people that want to make dollars. That's what they want. And just like all pyramid schemes, it always comes crashing down, okay? Because it's not built on a real foundation. It's not real built on a real basis. The economies that I'm going to show you today are built more like this. They're built on actual fun things. They're actually playable. They're actually bring enjoyment to people and they'll hold your attention not just because you want to make a dollar off of it, but because you want to participate and you want to play. The only difference is that it's not based off of food, essential, food, water, essentials. It's based off of, you know, higher up. But if you take this and we kind of expand it, we kind of see like um, and enlarge it. We have people coming in for entertainment. That's what they're looking for. And thus it's going to bring you actual value, actual money, actual dollars. Okay. And this is 
kind of an essential to, to any business period. If it's not filling a actual need, an actual purpose, an actual service, it's not worth you putting in dollars in. It's not worth your investment. Okay, we get it. We get it. All right. Play to earn is built off of pyramid scheme foundations, right? The same pyramid schemes we've seen for millennia that saying you got to buy into this and it supports people at the top because these people have made money. But the only reason they're making money is because people at the bottom are buying in. Before I get into these economies, I want to say that real money is made when smart people know how to make it. It doesn't necessarily come from mining or or playing or you know doing some just like looking at a digital screen or playing games and you get paid for it that's just never going to happen the real money is made when you logically think about how to profit from from these people and i i profited from these i profited from this this item because i knew that 30 cents was way too cheap of a price and that it should be worth more and it will be worth more in the future but there's other ways you can make money too you can just go and try and buy good deals and just flip them and that's what a lot of people do and if you have a large following and can avoid lots of the fees it's a very viable solution to making money the very first game that i ever put real life dollars in and was able to extract for actual money is counter strike global offensive this is a real digital economy that actually makes sense and actually provides actual value. This game is fun and has been around since the year 2000. The arms deal update was the very first time you could buy and sell video game skins. This was the 20 this was in 2013. So so for the last 9 years an actual video game economy has been existing that it actually works with real dollars. And so this with this update essentially what they did is they released what are called skins. Obviously, if you played any video game before in the past, you are familiar with the skin. Fortnite will charge you an arm and a leg for some skins. And CSGO, it's the same story. The only difference is that you're paying people and not the developers. So you might be asking, okay, if it's not NFT, how are they worth anything? How is the digital scarcity created? Just because it's not on the blockchain and not because it's on the NFT, it's not verifiable, doesn't mean that they aren't scarce. There are hundreds of ways coders can code something. Blockchain is just one inefficient way of doing that. Another way they did create digital scarcity is having limited time events or drops. For example, they have these operations that come out every couple of years, and the most recent one was Operation Riptide. The way it works is if you play these Operation Missions after paying for a pass, you'll get a chance to earn these stars. With the stars, you can then purchase all of these other items, but the operation only lasts for so long. Obviously, not every single item in this economy is going to be worth something. I feel like before we can get into why it all works, we need to understand why people are purchasing these and for what reason they're purchasing them. That is the actual foundation that's going to keep up the entire economy. This video game skin is called the Op Dragon Lore. It's known for its sexy dragon and its expensive price tag and is only available, available from the cobblestone crate crates that came out a long time ago. But those details are not necessary. What's actually necessary is why people are paying a price for this. The same reason you're worried about fancy cars or fancy dollars is the same reason you'll you'll you care about um, a video game skin like the Op Dragon War. It's to show it off to other people in game, and that really makes it important to understand why this digital economy stands up. Okay, if these skins weren't attractive and sexy, no one would be paying for them. In fact, there are thousands of items within the Steam community market that are going for nothing because they're so abundant and they're so cheap and no one cares about them. So that's Counter-Strike Global Offensive. That is the very first economy I wanted to show you. The next digital economy is Roblox. You might be thinking, cringe, okay? And I did too, but for I checked on my old account that I made in like 6th, 7th grade, and I saw that I had some items that had appreciated in value. While it was only like 2 or $3, it still was really cool to see, especially considering the fact that um, if you knew the right items to buy, you could make a lot of money. If we take a look at this this item, someone purchased this for freaking... Purchase, someone has this on sale for 3.12 million Robux, and the last time it was sold, it was for 1 million, and the time after that, it was 1.1. One, almost 2 million. You might be thinking, okay, Rob Roblox is just Roblox. I can't get real dollars for that. But there's actually external websites where you can sell these things for real money, and if not, sell them to real people for real money. So Roblox is number two. My third digital economy is going to be Rocket League, okay? They have created a Rocket League, which actually I've never really worked with, but 
these actual items will buy and, and sell for different prices. And if you buy older items that don't cost a lot of money, you could be seeing a return on your investment, you know? Now, here's the thing. I unfortunately don't have enough time in this one video to teach you how to make money in these economies. But if you're smart and you spend some time and you play the games and you see exactly um, what people are paying for, why they're paying for it, etc., you can actually make profit off of other gamers, right? Because they're they're gonna pay a price for these these things, and you can you can you can make money off of them. in the exact same way I have been for the last five years. Just take a look at this chart, okay? Obviously, okay. So the reason why it has this huge downtrend is because this is the day it first came out. Obviously, everyone's gonna buy it. It's the exact same story as uh, VB NFTs, right? You have the huge people buying in. They just want it. They'll do whatever because they think it's cool and it's the new thing. And then it dies down and it's set at the floor price, like the very bare minimum price you can for years, literally years. And then finally, when I saw this price turn go up, I was like, hey, hey, actually, I, you know, this is going to keep increasing. And I'll tell and I and I had some good reasons why I, I obviously I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, oh. <sighs> The last thing I want to leave you with is there are examples of video game digital economies that are actually just casinos. This is not one of them. Roblox is not really one of them either. Entropia Universe, you can go do your research on that, but Entropia Universe is essentially one of these downwards up pyramid schemes where people are putting in money just so that they can pay for these items that, you know, just so they can pay for some like ammo that they can shoot down some, some T-Rex or something and then hope that that T-Rex pays them uh, money so that they can go and sell it and then there's also like people that literally sit and sweat what they call sweating an animal and they'll get sweat from it and if they do it for freaking a year and a half then they'll actually make money like seriously if, if they do it but they'll make like two dollars like two dollars like it's nothing and so there's hundreds of ways you can make money through this uh but that's about it guys i'm i'm got a bit i recorded this twice y'all take care have a wonderful day see ya to the moon yeah, I wake up, then I'm going to the moon I just dropped all my savings, how about me and spaceship? I wake up, then I'm going to the moon